armamentarium for this procedure includes rubber dam, mirror, explorer, Hollenbach carver, ball burnisher, acorn burnisher, articulating paper, high and low speed hand pieces, Toffelmeyer, amalgam, number 330 burr, and number 4 round burr. The general considerations for this procedure include Guidelines given for a class 1 preparation should be followed during the preparation of the occlusal portion of the class 2 preparation. The proximal box should be broader at the cervical portion than at the occlusal portion for the amalgam retention. The buccal, lingual, and gingival walls should all break contact with the adjacent tooth, just enough to allow the tip of an explorer to pass, approximately 0.5 millimeters. The buccal and lingual walls should create a 90 degree angle with the enamel. The gingival wall should be flat, not beveled, and all unsupported enamel should be removed. The axial wall of the proximal box should be 0.5 mm into dentin and should follow the same contour as the outer proximal contour of the tooth. Because occlusal forces may permit a concentration of stress within the amalgam around sharp angles, the axial pulpal line angle should be routinely rounded. No buccal or lingual retentive grooves should be placed in the proximal box. The mesial distal width of the gingival seat should be 1 mm, which is approximately equal to the width of the number 330 burr. There are some differences between amalgam and composite restorations. Composite resins are more expensive but have better aesthetics. They are also highly moisture sensitive and have a shorter lifespan of their restoration. Conversely, amalgam restorations are less expensive, less aesthetic, less moisture sensitive, but have a longer lifetime of the restoration. There are some differences between primary and permanent teeth. Primary teeth have thinner enamel and dentin with more prominent pulp horns. This necessitates less steps of the prep compared with an adult class two prep. Due to the cervical constriction of primary molars, the gingival seat will be too narrow if prepared too deeply. Primary first molars have the most pronounced mesial pulp horns, so class II restorations involving the mesial surface are not performed on these teeth. Place a wooden wedge in the inner proximal area being restored. This retracts the gingival papilla during instrumentation which keeps the operator from cutting the interceptal rubber dam material and underlining gingiva, reducing the likelihood of hemorrhaging into the proximal box. It also creates some pre-wedging, which helps to ensure a tight proximal contact for the final restoration. Using a number 330 burr in a high-speed handpiece with a light brushing motion, remove caries and prepare all susceptible grooves. To prepare the proximal box, begin at the marginal ridge by brushing the burr buccolingually in a pendulum motion and in a gingival direction at the dentin enamel junction. Continue until contact is just broken between the adjacent tooth and the gingival wall and the wedge is seen. If the gingival wall is made too deep, the cervical constriction of the primary molar will create a very narrow gingival seat. Take care not to damage the adjacent proximal surface. Remove any remaining caries with a sharp spoon excavator or with a round burr in the low speed handpiece. Remove the wedge placed at the beginning of the treatment and place a Toffelmeyer band. Matrix bands or T bands are alternative options to using a Toffelmeyer. While holding the band in place, Forcefully reinsert the wedge between the Toffelmeyer band and the adjacent tooth, beneath the gingival seat of the preparation. The wedge is placed with a pair of how pliers or cotton forceps from the widest embrasure. The wedge should hold the band tightly against the tooth but should not push the band into the proximal box. It may be necessary to trim the wedge slightly to achieve a proper fit. Triturate the amalgam and using the carrier, Add the amalgam to the preparation in single increments, 
beginning in the proximal box. Using a small condenser, condense the amalgam into the corners of the proximal box and against the topical minor band to ensure the re-establishment of a tight proximal contact. Continue filling and condensing until the entire cavity is overfilled. Use a small round burnisher to begin the initial contouring of the amalgam. Carving the occlusal portion is performed with a small cleoid discoid carver, as in the class 1 restorations. The marginal ridge can be carved with the tip of the explorer or with a holland back carver. Carefully remove the wedge and the band, drawing the band in a buccal lingual direction as opposed to an occlusal direction, as this will be less likely to damage the marginal ridge of the newly placed restoration during the withdrawal. Gently floss the inner proximal contact to check the tightness of the contact, to check for a gingival overhang, and to remove any loose amalgam particles from the inner proximal region. Do a final burnish of the restoration with a ball burnisher and use a wet cotton pellet held with the cotton pliers for a final smoothing if necessary. Remove the rubber dam and check the occlusion for irregularities with articulating paper and adjust as needed. If adjacent MO and DO amalgam restorations are being performed, they should be filled simultaneously. Common errors for this procedure include preparing the cavity too deep, undercutting the marginal ridges, covering the anatomy of the amalgam too deep, not removing amalgam flash from the cable surface margins, undercarving, which leads to subsequent fracture of the amalgam from hyperocclusion, not including all susceptible fissures, marginal failure in the proximal box. This is usually due to excessive flare of the cable surface margin. In summary, for the preparation, the outline should be smooth and flowing into all susceptible fissures. The proximal and gingival contacts should be properly broken. The isthmus is one-third the intercuspal width. Proximal cable surface angles are at 90 degrees. Avoid damage to the adjacent tooth. The buccal and lingual walls of the proximal box should approach at a right angle in all rounded angles. The pulpal and axial floor depth should be appropriate. The internal walls are smooth and well-defined, and line angles are sharp. For the summary for the material placement, contour, and finish, the anatomy should be consistent and harmonious with tooth structure. Proper proximal contour and shape, normal proximal contacts, an absence of flash, the restoration should be smooth and without pits, voids, or irregularities. There should be proper occlusion, and you should avoid soft tissue damage.